soon, son. It'll be here soon. Whoa! Look at the train. Watch how the engine comes through the train. Even when I was a boy, I knew I wanted to work for the railroad. My parents had a farm in western Pennsylvania. When I did my chores, I could hear the whistle far down in the valley. I remember the day my mother took me to the station for my first train ride. Nothing before and nothing since has been as thrilling as that shiny black locomotive. As a boy growing up before the First World War, a locomotive was the biggest, fastest, most exciting thing I had ever seen. On that day, I saw my future. <laughs> the railroad station was the heart of the community, our gateway to the world. In those days, travel was an adventure. People dressed up for it. Here's your ticket, son. Thank you. Now remember everything I told you, okay? Okay. Now let's go to the conductor. Watch your step there, man. All you needed was a ticket. The railroad did the rest. This is my son, Pete. Please take good care of him. I will. Thank you. What time's the train leave? The train will leave in 10 minutes. Mark, can I go see the train? Sure, but hurry back. Those tracks were our lifeline. They took coal and iron out of our valley and brought in farm machinery, fresh fruit, and just about everything else you could think of. Having a railroad didn't guarantee prosperity, but it gave people a chance to build a better life. On that fine October morning, all I wanted to do was see the locomotive. I could hear it hissing and feel the heat from the boiler. And the smells, that mix of coal smoke, hot oil and steam, oh, that engine seemed like a living thing to me. Lord? And before I knew it, I had nearly missed my first train ride. Take care, son. Have fun. I'll get your ticket later. Bye, Pete. Love ya. The trains that served our town connected with the mighty Pennsylvania Railroad, the one folks called the Standard Railroad of the World. Look what John sent us from Scranton. What's that? Phoebe Snow, the advertising symbol of the Lackawanna Railroad. Boy, she's pretty. Would you like it? Yes, thank you. Take it, please. That was the first time I saw Miss Phoebe Snow. She was just an image in the ads of the Delaware, Lackawanna, and Western Railroad. But to me, she was the epitome of grace and elegance. A cozy seat, a dainty, dainty treat. treat. Make Phoebe's, Phoebe's happiness complete. complete. 
with linen white and silver bright upon the road of Anderson. The Lackawanna Railroad ran from New York City to the Great Lakes. It burned hard coal, anthracite, in its engines, which didn't make as much soot as soft coal. The railroad hoped people would ride Lackawanna trains to stay cleaner. I don't know if they did, but those old advertising slogans remain the poems of my childhood. Tickets here. Tickets, please. Thank you. Can I have it back, sir? Okay, you may have your ticket back, son. Thank you. Thank you. Tickets. Tickets, please. I held on to my first railroad ticket, and though that trip ended just an hour's ride down the line, I knew that a longer journey on the railroad was just beginning. By 1928, I had made more train trips than I could count. I was a station agent for the Lackawanna Railroad, filling in at different locations when the regular men were off. Mostly, I worked at the smaller stations on the branch lines. In those days, railroads reached into every corner of the country. They carried every imaginable kind of cargo from mail order catalogs to milk. Even big cities like New York could not have grown without railroads like the Lackawanna. Branch lines connected to the National Railroad Network not only transported goods and materials, but also brought families and friends together. Stay with mommy, honey. Most importantly, we carried food from the country to the city. Before the railroad, getting fresh milk had been a problem, and even people in the cities kept cows in their backyards. But now, farmers in New York, Pennsylvania, and New Jersey could put fresh milk on our trains in the morning, and it was in bottles on someone else's front step before the next dawn. I got to know men up and down the line. Running an efficient railroad depended on teamwork. We were like a family. The work was hard and the hours long, but we knew that what we did was important. The people depended on us. We were proud to be railroaders and proud of the D, L, and W. Almost two million men and women throughout the United States worked on the railroad in the 1920s. In the Great Depression, though many lost their jobs, the railroad remained strong. Bring you up 
Trains carried over 43 million service personnel and billions of tons of war material. Excuse me, soldier, if you have the time. Yes, sir. It's 9.55. Thank you. Now boarding Delaware, Lackawanna, and Western Railroad, train number five. Evening, Leo. Do you have a full train to Buffalo tonight? We do. We're back here to go. Are we leaving on time? Yes, we will. Very good. I'll see you on board. Yes, sir. By then, I'd been promoted to general passenger agent. I traveled every mile of the Lackawanna Railroad looking after the comfort and safety of our passengers. Good evening. They depended on us as they always had, and we took good care of them. Thank you very much, ma'am. Have a pleasant trip. Oh, thank you so much. Oh, Porter, will you please be very careful with that bag? Yes, ma'am. Now, oh, could you wake me up at 7 sharp? Yes, ma'am. A breakfast at 7.30? Oh, that'll be fine. Why don't you step forward the train? Everyone worked hard to keep the trains running 24 hours a day. Sometimes I'd get so wrapped up in my work that I would forget what had attracted me to railroading. And then when I least expected it, the memory of Phoebe Snow would return. And with it, the excitement of train travel. In the 1940s, America still traveled by train. I'll never forget the sight of one of our big locomotives, Poganos we called them, pulling a long train of coaches and sleeping cars through the Pennsylvania countryside. In that gracious era, Lackawanna dining cars were more than rolling restaurants. We prided ourselves on superior service and fine food, even though we couldn't turn a profit. Yeah, is everything all right? Good meals were a railroad tradition and some of the best advertising money could buy. People even got their mail by rail. Clerks in the railway post office cars picked up mail on the fly, sorted it en route, and delivered it to hundreds of towns along the line. These were the years when I was most proud of my work. Steam railroading was at its peak, but changes were on the horizon. The new diesel-electric locomotive moved trains quicker and cheaper, and the railroads concentrated on their more profitable freight trains. I knew that the days of the steam locomotive were numbered. The 1950s brought profound change to the railroads. Americans embraced the automobile with a passion, Despite millions of dollars spent on diesel locomotives and improved service, passengers deserted the trains for the expanding interstate highway system. Soon, only commuter trains had steam locomotives at the head end, and they were being dieselized as quickly as the railroads could afford to make the change. Mighty locomotives that once pulled crack Pullman trains now shuttled workers from their homes to their places of work. But even with diesels, passenger trains still couldn't compete with the speed and fascination of airplanes. I couldn't help but look back to the days when Phoebe Snow, dressed in white, had been there with me, riding the roads of anthracite. I still had my first train ticket and all my memories.
Riding one of the last Lackawanna steam trains brought back the feeling of my first train trip. After 40 years, I was still drawn to the front of the train. I'm proud to have spent my life on the railroad because after all these years, I'm still just that kid from Western Pennsylvania who can't get enough of steel and steam. Producers. 